A very good morning to each one of you, even as you are seated in your homes and listening to the sermon. Today is the third Sunday after Easter. We are almost 40 days into our lockdown and we are still not sure what the future holds for us. Many states are planning for an extended lockdown. Uh, some of them say it may go up to the middle of May. Others want to go up to the beginning of June. Uh, some states are thinking of gradually opening up their shops and establishments according to the different zones, whether they are in the red zone or orange zone or green zone. And uh, there is a lot of confusion and chaos. We don't know where we are going, what we are going to do, and what does the future hope uh, for us in this kind of situation. And the picture that comes to me is that we are like sheep without a shepherd, you know, scattered all over the place. We don't really have somebody to guide us very clearly. And we don't know where we are going and we don't even have a hope. But it is in this kind of a context, in the midst of this massive pandemic around the globe, that the theme for our morning's meditation makes absolute sense. The theme for our morning's meditation is the Good Shepherd. And I will be working through Psalm 23, which is a psalm which most of us would have learnt it when we were small, we would know it by heart. And I'm really grateful to Dr. Ramesh Richard, who preached a sermon 35 years ago on this psalm, and the outline of which has been etched on my mind ever since. And this morning, I would be using that outline, even though there has been some modification to it. <coughs> the psalm begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. It is a psalm of David. And the first line is in fact the key line to unlock the whole psalm. Because the psalm was written by David it comes under the category of the Psalms of trust or confidence. And David and his men uh, were in danger. And David may have written it when his life was under threat by Saul who wanted to kill him. And David himself was a shepherd. And so he is quite familiar with the metaphor of a shepherd and the nuances of what it meant to be a shepherd. And the title shepherd in the Old Testament was usually used of kings and rulers. But here we see David makes it clear that Yahweh was his shepherd. Yahweh was his shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And it's interesting, there's a very small word, a little word there, my shepherd. And the word my is the most important word there because it is a personal pronoun. You know, you may say, this is my Bible, when I talk about my Bible here, because I know this belongs to me. And there is something personal about it. And David understands that very clearly, because he says, Yahweh is my shepherd. He was a sheep, and God was a shepherd. And so there is this personal relationship between the sheep and and the shepherd. And David has made the Lord as a shepherd. And because he has made the Lord as a shepherd, everything else comes true for him. So this morning I want us to talk, I want us to look at six G's. And we will look at six of these points under different words. The first thing he says is, in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. I lack nothing. The shepherd is the giver. And that's the first G I want to leave with you. He's a giver of all good things. David makes it clear that he will never be in want. David would not lack any good thing because he had made the Lord his shepherd. And that is true for each one of us. When you and I have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, the Lord gives us everything that we need. 
He doesn't satisfy our greed, but our needs are met by him. Our basic needs of food, of clothing, of shelter, of family, all these things are given by the Lord Jesus. And therefore, he satisfies us. He gives us inner peace. And he's a giver of all the good things for us. And David says, because of that, I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I shall not be in want. They would, would have no needs that are not met by the Lord himself. And that's the first thing I want to leave with each one of you this morning. That God is somebody who gives us. He is a giver of all good things. He knows what is good for us. And therefore would always fulfill our basic needs. And then we move on to verse 2. David says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And so the second thing that we see here is the shepherd is not only a giver of all good things, but the shepherd is one who grazes his sheep. And David is saying that he makes me lie down in green pastures. It's a beautiful picture of rest and restoration. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters and he refreshes my soul. The shepherd wants to make sure that his sheep are fed and watered. And Yahweh is the good shepherd. He made sure that his people were well fed and watered. Sheep need to be grazed so that they can be healthy. They need to be well fed. David knew that because he had made Yahweh his shepherd, his needs would be met. And he would be taken between, beside quiet waters or waters of rest. And the picture is of sheep feeding beside a stream or a lake and then rest, resting. And Yahweh was indeed the good shepherd in the Old Testament. In the New Testament from the Gospel reading we see that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And all those who came before him were thieves and robbers. The shepherd always leads the sheep beside still waters that they can drink without the fear of the river sweeping them away. If the waters were still, then the sheep had nothing to fear. And in similar way, Jesus leads us beside still waters. He grazes us. He feeds us. Both physically and spiritually, he nourishes us. Physically, he provides for all our basic needs of food, of shelter and clothing. And spiritually, he nourishes us through his word and through his sacraments. And therefore, we see that he leads us. He, re he leads us beside still waters. He refreshes our soul. He renews us. And that is the work of the Good Shepherd. So Good Shepherd, in our context again, in times like this, when we are under lockdown, He's the one who can renew us. Maybe many of you are sitting in your homes and locked up, and you think, what can I do? But these are times for renewal. God has given you this time to feed on His Word, to draw strength from His Word, to commune with Him, so that you will be nourished spiritually and that you would find rest in his presence. And so the shepherd is the one who grazes us. He gives and he grazes. So these are the first two things that we see. The third thing that we see about the shepherd 
is the shepherd is one who guides. He is a giver. He is one who grazes the sheep. And thirdly, he guides his sheep. The psalmist says, He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. He not only restores our souls, not only revives us, not only nourishes us, not only refreshes us, but he is the one who guides us. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. The shepherd always leads into paths which is good for the sheep. Similarly, David knows that God's guidance will always be for his own good. And that's what we need to remember. That when God guides us, he guides us into paths that are right. It's not something that he hasn't been through before. You know, maybe some of you have seen shepherds leading a flock of sheep. Sometimes they go ahead of the sheep. They lead the sheep from uh, before them. Sometimes they are behind them. And then they direct them and give them direction. So either way, whether they are leading from the front or leading from the back, we see that they are ones who lead the sheep. You know, a guide is somebody who has been there. And therefore he knows the route and he guides you. And we see here like a tourist guide. You know, a guide who is familiar with the Taj Mahal would easily take you around and explain every single bit of the Taj. Whereas if you and I go there, we may not be aware of all the nuances of that monument. Similarly, we see Jesus is our guide. He has gone through this path. He has gone through the path of suffering. He died for us. He rose again. And therefore, because he has gone through this path yet without sin, he is able to guide us very clearly. And it says, he leads me in right paths for his name's sake. In other words, he will always lead us what is in line with his character. God's guidance will not be against his character. God cannot do anything against his own will. And therefore, when we seek God's guidance, we need to make sure that it is in line with scripture. You know, we cannot go against God's will. And therefore, we need to wait on God and ask him for guidance. God guides us very clearly in line with his character, in line with his word. He will not guide us anything that is not in line with his character. So that's the third thing that we see about the shepherd. A shepherd is one who gives. A shepherd is one who grazes. A shepherd is one who guides. Fourthly, we see that the shepherd is one who guards his sheep. Verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in some translations. We see here, when there is danger, the shepherds are usually in the front. David himself fought wild animals to protect the sheep. If you turn to 1 Samuel 17 verse 34, David says to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down and kill it. And that was David's own experience, that he would always guard his sheep. He would always guard his sheep. And he is the one who watches over us. Even though when we walk through the darkest valley, through the valley of the shadow of death, when our lives seem to be in danger, all around us when we see death, 
It may be like a tunnel experience when we are going through this corona pandemic. But we see here that the psalmist says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And therefore we see that a shepherd is one who cares for a sheep, who protects a sheep, who gives his life for the sake of the sheep. A real life incident which I read many years ago was about a little shepherd boy who was tending to his flock about 50 sheep near a slope and on which there was a railway track. Many of the sheep were grazing in and around the railway track. And the shepherd boy was at the bottom of the valley and he saw a train coming on the tracks and many of his sheep were on the track. So the shepherd boy ran up the slope trying to chase away all the sheep that were standing on the tracks. And in the end what happened was 30 of his sheep died, but along with the sheep, the shepherd boy also died. And if an ordinary human being, a shepherd boy, could give his life for the sake of a sheep, of a sheep, how much more has Jesus done for us? He gave his life for us. He took the penalty of our sins on the cross. And therefore he protects us. He watches over us. He is a God who neither slumbers nor sleep. And he assures us of his presence in the midst of all these pandemic. And that's the assurance he gave David. David says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And that is what God assures us this morning. That he is the one who guards us. He is the one who guards us. And he is the one who protects us. And therefore the first four things that we've seen is a shepherd is one who gives. Shepherd is one who grazes. Shepherd is one who guides. Shepherd is one who guards. And fifthly, the shepherd is one who girds. In verse 5, he says, You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is one, is the one who prepares a table for the psalmist in the presence of his enemies. And the setting of the table is symbolic of celebration, of a feast. And the feast is for the enemies to see that the Lord is in control and that David was a servant. Even though there were enemies who were there to get his life, he knew that God was in control. Yahweh was in control. He reigns supreme. He is the one who girds his people. He takes preventive action. Like you see these railway girders to prevent animals and humans from entering into the track. God puts girders around our life so that no evil can come near us. So he's a God, he's a God who girds us. And so that's the fifth thing I want to leave with you. He acts in advance, protecting us from evil. So the shepherd is one who gives. The shepherd is one who grazes. The shepherd is one who guides. The shepherd is one who guards. The shepherd is one who girds. And finally we see the shepherd is one who leads him into goodness and glory. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And the psalmist is quite clear about the goodness and mercy that will follow him all the days of his life. He has put his quiet confidence and trust on God as Savior. He knows that God will take care of him. God is a good God. And God watches over us. And mercy is something that 
God's character. It's part of God's character. Mercy is not getting what we desire. The punishment that we deserve is not given to us. And the end result of all this is that the psalmist is going to the house of the Lord and he would follow him all the days of his life. The psalm begins with the Lord and ends with the Lord. And so we see here that Jesus is the good shepherd. And so as I sum up the psalm, a psalm that we have all learnt by heart from our childhood, it's a wonderful psalm. It's a psalm of trust, a psalm of confidence. The shepherd who gives us, the shepherd who grazes us, the shepherd who guides us, the shepherd who guards us, the shepherd who girds us and the shepherd who is good, who leads us into goodness and mercy will follow us. And so as we face this pandemic, you know, we need to remember that God is with us. Like the psalmist David said, even though I walk through the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. And that is our greatest assurance. That even in the midst of this lockdown. Even in the midst of this pandemic. When we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what's at the other end of the tunnel. We know that Jesus is walking with us. We know that he is our shepherd. Jesus will always lead us into right things, into the paths of righteousness. He will provide for our needs. So there's no need to be anxious. What shall I eat or what shall I wear? Because God knows what the sheep needs. Jesus knows what you need. He is the giver of all good things. He is the one who leads us into rest. He guides us. And he guards us. He guards us from all the attacks of the evil one. He guards us. He is a protective hedge for us, even before evil can come anywhere close to us. And finally, we see that the shepherd leads us into goodness, because goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. And so, just as the psalmist went to the house of the Lord to follow Yahweh all the days of his life. Let us also rejoice and come into God's presence, celebrating that he is our good shepherd. And let us put our faith in Jesus Christ. Just like David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Let us be able to acknowledge that Jesus is my shepherd. And once that is true, all these remaining six things will come true for us. May the good shepherd be with you, watch over you during this lockdown, provide for your needs, encourage you, and walk with you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are our good shepherd. Thank you that you're a God who sustains us. You're a God who gives us what we need. Thank you that you're a God who takes care of our basic needs. You grace us. Both spiritually and physically, you nourish us with your word and your sacraments. And Lord, you provide our basic needs. Thank you also, Lord, for your God who leads us in the paths of righteousness. Lord, we know that your leading is always right and in line with scripture. Your guidance will never be wrong. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the good shepherd, that even though when we walk through this darkest valley of this corona pandemic, your presence is with us and that you will protect us with your rod and your staff. Thank you, Lord, that you take preventive measures, that you put girders around us so that evil cannot come anywhere close to us. Thank you that goodness and mercy will follow us because you are a good God. You give good things for us. And Father, I pray that you teach us to go to the house of the Lord and to dwell there, to follow you all the days of our life. 
Fill us with your spirit. Strengthen us. Encourage us. Lift our spirits up. And as we wade through this, Lord, dark valley, help us to come out of it with your presence. So bless each one of us and use us for your glory. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.